So, hey, everybody, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us today for the Greener Giving Gifts in a Jar workshop. This is the first of three weeks, uh, workshops that we're going to be offering this month on zero waste uh, or waste free reduction practices. I'm Marissa, and uh, over here we have Jess, you can see her waving, and Rebecca, who is our facilitator. Um, and before we get uh, started, I just want to connect on a couple of housekeeping items. Um, we are recording this workshop, as I mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, so the microphones and your cameras have been turned off for your privacy and security. Um, if you do have any questions during the uh, presentation, please just type them out in the chat and we will be having a question and answer period at the end. Um, so we'll read them all out and we will address everything. Um, if typing is too much for you, you can just raise your hand in the chat box and let us know you do have a question and we'll call out your name at the end. And we'd again be happy to unmute you and you can ask your question in person. Um, and if anyone has any access needs, please let us know in the chat box as well and we'll do our very best to accommodate. Um, what? Uh, let's see. So we're really excited about this series on zero waste because it transitioned from our composting workshops, um, which was a series that we just finished up last month. Uh, we have run many workshops over the past few months in promotion of the launch of a very exciting project for us here at York Region Food Network. It's called the Compost Learning Hub, and we're fondly referring to it as the hub. <laughs> Um, this is an initiative that is going to provide opportunities for folks to participate in educational workshops um, and give residents the opportunity to incorporate waste-free practices at home. Um, the Hub's physical place will launch in 2021 where an in-person tour, fingers crossed, will, will in-person tours will be um, offered. And until then, we're gonna be doing all of our stuff um, and, and workshops through online forums like this. Yeah, and um, although we're connecting virtually right now, um, just due to COVID, um, we do encourage everyone to just take a moment and acknowledge where we're each situated. Um, so I know Marissa and I, and, and also Rebecca, um, we're currently in what's known as York Region, um, but uh, it's our basic responsibility um, to just understand and learn about the history of the land um, that we're on. So. Um, currently, we're working and living on the traditional territories of the uh, Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Wendat um, First Nations. Um, and our closest uh, First Nation um, community is the Chippewas of Georgina Island. Um, and th uh, they're up uh, on Georgina Island about an hour and 15 minutes away from us. Um, so. Many of our practices, um, and that includes our uh, like our organizational structure, um, you know, the the foods we plant, the seeds we plant, the foods uh, that we prepare, um, and the ways that we educate, um, and uh, our methods of growing and harvesting and preparing food. Um, these came to these lands through the ongoing process of colonization. Um, so it's just important for us to hold this understanding in our interactions um, and our engagements with the land and, and the people. And always, um, it's, it's just, it's our responsibility to take action beyond uh, just a land acknowledgement. Um, so respecting and caring for the land um, by nourishing it, uh, that's our responsibility. So as we just get into the um, contents of the workshop, let's just continually uh, investigate and bring that to the forefront, um, uh, these understandings. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna give you a little rundown about our awesome presenter, Rebecca over here. Say hi. <laughs> Rebecca Alton is a food lover who's always looking for ways to reduce both in the kitchen and in life um, from using old ribbons and towels to wrap up gifts to storing anything and everything in jars of every size. She is always finding creative ways to reuse materials to suit her purpose. Um, she's gonna lead us through some really exciting recipes and ideas on creating gifts in a jar and share with us creative, natural, waste-free ways on how to decorate them. So we're gonna play the video that we have pre-recorded with her for you um, to share some of these ideas. 
Again, let me just remind you, if you have questions as they pop up in your head throughout the presentation, please just jot them down in the chat and we're gonna be so happy to um, answer them. Rebecca's gonna be so happy to answer them in the end. Okay, so here we go. In just a minute. Okay, so the first uh, jar that we're gonna make for today is a no need bread mix in a jar, um, which is great because you can just give this to somebody and they can then make an entire loaf of bread or turn it into buns um, to go with their meal for the day. So first thing you need is one of the one liter or quart jars and you're gonna need, you can use a funnel, you don't have to use a funnel, but it makes it a lot easier if you do. And so the first thing we're gonna do is three and a half cups of bread flour. Um, so I'm just using a half cup measure, okay, just because it fits a little bit nicer. So we'll do half, and I always count by half, so it makes it easier for me. And then one, and then half, and two, Half. And just shake it down every now and then to make sure it goes in. And three. So three and a half. And the last little bits, yeah, you will have to shake it down. If you're using a spoon, okay, that also kind of works to get it in. It'll just be a little bit messier. And then we're gonna take two teaspoons of, this is the quick rising yeast, and you wanna make sure that it is the quick rising run and not the active dry yeast, because the active dry yeast you need to add water to first before you mix it. Um, using the quick stuff means that you can just put it right into the jar. So we're gonna put two teaspoons of this in the top. One, two. And then the last thing actually is salt, and it's two teaspoons of salt as well. Same thing, just in the top of the jar is fine. You could mix all of this in a bowl beforehand and then stir it all up and then put it in the jar afterwards if you want it all mixed. Um, otherwise, just having it like that is fine. And then simple, just put the lid right on top and that's all it is. So when you give this to somebody, you're gonna have a little tag that goes with it um, with the instructions on how to make it. You can make them really pretty. You can make it just really simple. I just did a really simple printed one on a piece of paper. Um, and we're gonna be wrapping this actually in a tea towel. So rather than attaching it with a string or anything like that, I save all of my elastic bands off of everything that I get. I have a huge drawer of them. Kids love to fling them across the room, but that's okay. But we're gonna use these actually to attach onto the jar. So I'll do it so you guys can see. So we're just gonna hold it on the top, put the elastics on. And same thing, you're gonna to wanna to try and line it up so that it's fairly straight. You don't wanna have any twists or bends in it just to make it look a little bit nicer. And you can adjust it as we go. And then same thing, I like to put a second one on just because that way it holds it straight there. Good, and then that just holds it in place, but it means that at the end of the day, when they're done and you're giving it to somebody, then they get two elastics to add to their collection, um, but you're not using anything that has to be thrown away from there. And then the last thing we have to do is wrap it. So I love wrapping things in tea towels, actual towels, sometimes pillowcases, but whatever you wanna give to somebody, unless you know them really well and you're gonna give it back, and then you can use other things if you want to. Um, but because this is just a simple jar, there's nothing fancy about it, we're gonna do it in a wrap where we end up with a little handle. So you're gonna line the jar up. Um, if you're using a tea towel, the long corners are opposite the top and the bottom, okay? And then we're gonna go flick it over the top, okay? So you're gonna have one corner here, same thing on this side. So you have two short ends, and this takes a little bit of figuring out, okay? But you wanna have the top corner um, or the outside corner on the top, not on the bottom, because otherwise it doesn't quite sit right. And then you're gonna take the sides and nice and tight, hold them and pull them up to the top. You could twist them if you wanted to, okay? But you're gonna end up with a little one from here. Now you could just tie this, which works fine too, but I like to give it a little handle. So you're gonna take these and tie a knot just at the top. And this is where things get a bit tricky. So 
when you're working with um, whether it's tea towels or anything it takes a bit of finicky figuring out to pull things a little bit tight you could leave it in a knot I like to tuck the ends in just because it makes it a little bit more obvious that you have an actual handle there and tighten it up and then you end up with a little jar that you can carry just like that and then when you give it to somebody they can keep the tea towel they can actually use that to cover up the bread when it's rising um, and then they can also use it after when they're done to keep the bread warm before they serve it and that's how you make bread in a jar and give it away okay so the next thing we're gonna make is a Moroccan lentil soup in a jar um, and this one actually makes two jars so you can either give one to two different people or you can keep one for yourself and give one away um, and so for this recipe the first thing we're gonna do is mix up all of the spices first so you're gonna need a little jar that you can put things into and we're going to start by adding um, a teaspoon of garlic powder And just into the jar and then we're gonna do a teaspoon of cinnamon Uh, we're going to do a teaspoon of cumin. Now for those of you who like coriander, um, you would put two teaspoons of coriander in as well with this. Uh, coriander does not go over very well in my family, so I'm not going to put that in for the moment. Um, but you could add the two teaspoons of coriander in now at the same time. And then we're going to put in a teaspoon of ground pepper. Um, I'm just going to kind of estimate how much we're going to use on this one because I'm going to grind it fresh. I like fresh ground pepper. And it also means if you want a little bit more in there, you can put a little bit more or a little bit less. That's about right. And then we're going to do two teaspoons of turmeric. And you could half this if you wanted to just make one jar instead of doing two jars. You could just half everything and uh, that would work fine too. And we're going to do two teaspoons of dried parsley. Good. And then two teaspoons of salt. take all of that and just mix it up so I tend to use the same spoon that I measured everything with because I like to save a dish um, but feel free to grab either a little whisk or a spoon or fork whatever works best for you and then once this is all mixed up nice and pretty then we're going to start to put this into the jars so you want to have both jars um, with you at the same time because then you can do them at the same time and we're gonna make little layers so First thing we're going to do is you need three and a half cups of red lentils. What you're going to do is start by putting one cup into each jar. So we're going to put one cup of lentils into the bottom of each jar. And again, I'm just measuring out from the top here. So half. Good. And then one. You just want to kind of shake it around a bit so that it makes it fairly level. A little prettier and same thing on the other side Half. good and then one and we're going to add more of that again in just a minute okay and then we're going to use the spice and we're going to divide it equally approximately into both of the jars okay so still keeping that funnel there we're just going to slowly bring about half of it in and same thing you can use the spoon to push it over to the edges so that you can see those layers there and then same thing here And then we're going to um, put in some dried onion flakes. So we're going to use a total of half of a cup. So it's about this much here. Again, I'm going to use my half cup measure because I like to do things with as few dishes as possible. It just, it saves me a little bit of time. 
So same thing, we're going to put the onion flakes into the top. Quarter cup goes into each one. Oops. And that is why I use the funnel instead of just trying to dump it in. And take our spoon, push it again over to the edges so it makes those nice little layers again. And then we're going to add three quarters of a cup of lentils into each one. So again, we're going to take our half cup measure and put half a cup first and our quarter cup measure for three quarters of a cup on top of one. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So again, a half cup of lentils in the top, another quarter to make that three quarters. Good. And then we can take these all out and just put those off to the side. And then we just seal them up. Oh, no, wait, first we're gonna put a bay leaf in the top. I almost forgot. We'll put one bay leaf in the top of that one, and we'll do another one in the top here. And it just makes this, when they open it, it's a little bit of a little surprise for them as well. And then we're going to close up the tops of the jars, nice and tight. And then you have your jars all ready to go. And these are really nice because they're super simple when you make them. So all you have to add is seven cups of water. Um, and then you put it on the stove, cook it for about 40 minutes, 20 minutes covered, 20 minutes uncovered, and it's done. And then you end up with a really nice meal. And you could pair that with your bread as well for a extra nice meal for the day. Um, so the next thing we have to do is we are going to decorate these jars. So we're going to do it a couple different ways. Um, First thing we're going to use is uh, just some stuff that I found outside. So I just took a walk around my neighborhood and I didn't take things off of trees because you really shouldn't do that. But I found a tree that had tons of pine cones underneath. So I grabbed a couple pine cones and um, with all the wind we've had recently, some of the branches have come down. So I just have a little sprig of uh, some pine here as well. And then I like to use lots of different things. Um, I've used twine, I've used uh, just like cotton string yarn. If you have any leftover ribbons, you can use that. But today I am using an old necklace. So this is kind of a nice little bonus that if somebody um, you're giving me two happens to like necklaces, then you can use it for this. And what we're gonna do is thread the little instructions onto the necklace first. And then you're going to take the necklace and wrap it around um, your pine cone. So the pine cone you wanna have open at least a little bit so you can get it in between each of the little um, spiky bits that's coming out. And you're gonna wrap it around a couple times just so it gives it something to hold onto, okay? And again, you can adjust this as you're going and you may have to adjust it um, as we do this. And then a little piece of green. So again, you can adjust this as you want to as well. We're just gonna tuck it behind and I'm gonna actually loop the necklace around it once more just to kind of hold it in place, okay? And again, this is the kind of thing that can get a little bit finicky. Um, we'll see how it goes. So once you have it there, then all you're gonna do is wrap it around your jar and again, depending on the length of your necklace, um, bracelets don't work. I've tried a lot of times, but I find that unless it's a really loose bracelet, it just doesn't fit around the jar. Um, and so this one, I have a little bit of extra length here. So I'm actually gonna close it and then I'm gonna readjust how many times it goes around the pine cone just to make it tighter. That's not bad, okay. So there's one, and then the other one we're gonna use, um, so I'm using a dried orange, actually it's a clementine, um, now that we're in clementine season. So for this, all I did was I cut it into really thin slices, and I took a clementine and put it into the oven at 200 degrees for a couple of hours. Um, actually put it in for about an hour and then just turned the oven off and left it overnight. And when it finishes, it comes out, it's a little tiny bit sticky, um, but not too much. And it just makes a really nice, bright um, decoration that you can use as well. 
And then we're gonna use some cotton twine. And this is sage that I pulled out of my garden. So if you know somebody who has fresh herbs, um, whether it's sage or rosemary, um, thyme is really nice as well. Or you could use bay leaves if you know of somebody who has a bay plant. Um, ask them for a couple little sprigs or if you have a garden of your own or just a pot on a windowsill then it's a nice something that you can use and it smells wonderful at the same time. So we're going to use the twine first. Um, you're going to fold the twine in half and you're going to poke it through the center of the orange, or clementine in this case, just with the folded end and then loop it through so that you end up with the little tie in the center, okay? Just like that. And then we're gonna tie this around the jar. So this one I actually will tie properly. And again, you can add a um, tie to this. I just didn't, okay? And again, and you could leave it like that if you wanted to, that actually is kind of pretty just as it is. But then you can also just take some herbs and stick them into the top, again, however you want to to make it look nice and add just that extra little bit of greenery to it so that when you're giving it away that it looks even more pretty and seasonal. And then that's just another way you can decorate up your jars where you don't use anything other than what you can find. Um, and at the end of the day when they're done then the person you give it to still has their beautiful jar and they haven't got anything to throw away. Okay, they can use their herbs in cooking and uh, or just turn it into another decoration for the tree. Okay, so another idea um, that is pretty common for putting into jars is to put cookie mixes into jars for people to make. Uh, so we're going to make a holiday M&M cookie in a jar mix. So the first thing that you're going to need is a bowl because we're going to mix up the flour, salt and baking soda first. So the first thing we're going to need is one and three quarter cups of all-purpose flour. Okay, so again, we'll go half and then one. Doing my math for the day. One and a half and then we'll use our quarter cup for that three quarters. So one and three quarter cups of all-purpose flour. And then we're going to just put in half a teaspoon of baking soda, not baking powder, baking soda. Okay. And half a teaspoon of salt. Good. And then we'll just stir it all up so that the salt and baking soda is fairly evenly distributed within the um, flour itself. Okay. And then we're going to just start to layer. So I'm actually using a old honey jar uh, for this one. Um, it's about the right size. So you want one that's about, again, about a liter in size for this recipe. Um, but you could, again, use what you have around. So that's why I say I'm using a jar that used to have honey in it and now is going to become my cookie gift, which I'm quite happy about. So let's grab, just forgot the funnel there. So again, you don't have to use a funnel. It just makes things a little bit neater. Um, so I am going to still use it again for today and if you're not then just use a spoon and you can put it in from there. So we're going to carefully put this in, trying not to spill too much of it. And then we're going to put in three quarters of a cup of dark brown sugar. So what we're going to do is we're alternating the lighter ingredients and the darker ingredients just to make it look really pretty. Okay. So three quarter cups um, of dark brown sugar, so half a cup first. And this one with the brown sugar, because it is a little bit uh, more moist, you are going to have to kind of pack it down in there. So that one's half. Quarters. Good, and you can take that out for just evening it out again, making sure that it's packed down and pretty all to the sides. And you can start to see how it makes a nicer layer there as well. 
And then we're gonna put in some white sugar next. So just regular granulated white sugar. And just a quarter cup of this one. <gasps> a little bit too much there. There we go. Good. And then same thing, just using your fork or spoon to level it out. Good. And next we're going to put in half a cup of chocolate chips. Okay, whatever your favorite kind of chocolate chip is. And you could put other things. You could use white chocolate chips. Oh, look at that. I have just the right amount. How awesome is that? Um, Good. Again, just pushing down that a little bit more because I'm going to have just barely enough space to top this off with M&Ms. So I'm actually going to put these ones in with my hands. So it's about a half cup. In this case, I'm just going to fill the jar to the very top. So that is about right. Um, if you had a slightly larger jar, then you could also um, just use the funnel again. So when I made this the other day with just a regular one quart jar, it fit with extra space. Um, this one's going to fit just right. And then we're going to put our lid on. Okay, just like that. So you have a couple nice little layers in there. Okay, and so for this one, the one thing with this is that you're not just adding like one ingredient. So with this one, you have to make sure that you do include a label and it's gonna tell your recipient, your gift recipient, um, what it is that they need. So in this case, they're gonna need to add butter, egg, and uh, some vanilla extract to complete making the cookies, okay? You can't just put all that stuff in here, it's not gonna work. You could make the cookies in advance and give them cookies in a jar, which would be a wonderful gift as well. But if you wanna have it where it's something they can make when they want to make it, then you just wanna make sure you're only putting the dry things in the jar and not adding the wet. So, the next thing we have to do is decorate it again. So make sure you have your label, okay? And again, we're gonna do something similar to um, what we did before. Again, I'm, when I went on my walk and got um, my fan things, I also found some nice longer pine cones as well. And this is rosemary sprigs, again, just from my little garden, okay? So we're gonna use a longer piece of string, okay? And you wanna find the middle. We're gonna wrap it twice around your fingers to make that slip knot so that we can start this time by putting it over top of the jar. And I like the slip knot because it means that you can tighten it up when you need to. Um, and make it just the right size and it gives you a little bit of extra flexibility in how you do it and then it stays on really really well. Uh, so now we have our two ends so I'm going to put the tag through okay you can use a hole punch or scissors to put a little hole in the top of your tag there and then I'm going to use the extra string to tie around the um, pine cone and the rosemary. So you can kind of set it up however you like it best there. Okay, again, I'm gonna wrap it. So I'm gonna keep it fairly close and I'm gonna wrap it around a couple times first and then around the actual jar with it in it as well, just to hold it in place. Okay, wrap it around the jar again a second time and then I can actually tie it off. So I could leave it longer if I wanted to, to make it again, nice and pretty or just tie it off in a simple knot so that it's got a nice little gift. So yeah, so just another way you can do it. And um, you'll kind of notice that when I've been wrapping things in towels, that I tend to choose things that it doesn't matter if you have layers or not. So when you want it to look really pretty, if you have layers in your jar, you want to kind of keep it upright because if you keep tipping it side to side as you're wrapping things up, you're going to lose those layers completely and then it doesn't really look as nice. So if it doesn't matter what it looks like, absolutely wrap things up. If it does matter, then either wrap it up and keep it upright the entire time or just adding, um, again, little bits of greenery that you've found or you can snip from your garden or your neighbor's garden if you have permission um, is a nice alternative for getting things to look pretty. Okay, so another idea that you can use as a uh, zero waste gift for somebody is to make them a sprouting jar. 
Um, so something just a little bit different. It's still a food, but you're giving them something they can grow themselves, which in the winter is kind of nice, especially to get something that is fresh um, rather than just getting a lot of dried things or uh, something you can still grow yourself if you wanted to grow something in the garden. So what you need is a jar. Um, I'm using a wide mouth mason jar, just one of the small ones. You could use any size jar though. The nice thing with this project is that it's super simple, but you can use anything. So you can use a jar that you have found. Um, it can be plastic, it can be glass, whatever it is that you happen to have. Um, but yeah, so for today though, I'm just gonna use one of the 500 milliliter uh, mason jars. And I like the wider mouth just because it makes it easier to um, get the spreads out when you're actually harvesting them. So for this, we're gonna use just some simple cheesecloth. Okay, and all you wanna do is make sure that you have a square, you're gonna cut a square out that is a little bit bigger than the size of the opening of the jar. Okay, so I'm going to totally do it by eye and just leave the jar there and give a cut on the other side so that I get something about the right size that'll still cover what I need, but then I can keep everything all together. Um, you could be super precise with this and get a measuring uh, tape or a ruler to measure it how big you want it. You could also uh, trace a circle as well and then make it even bigger just so that it actually fits. But then that's pretty much it. So you're gonna use this and put it over top of the jar. Um, and then to seal it, you can either, if you're using a mason jar, use the ring and it will actually just screw on the top, okay? Um, because it is fairly thick for the cheesecloth, you just have to kind of make sure it's in the right space, which mine is not going quite right. There we go. Okay, simple as that, okay? Or instead of using the actual ring, if you're using a found jar or anything else that you happen to have, having the cheesecloth and just having the elastic to go around the top of it acts in the same way, okay? Now I've kind of done this a little bit out of order, but that's pretty much your jar. You have the option as well, if you wanted to, of including some seeds in that. Um, so you can buy spreading seeds uh, from, usually health food stores have them, sometimes uh, bulk food stores will have them as well. You can also order them online from some actual seed companies, but they're not too far to get. Um, you could just actually get a package of them and include it in the jar itself and just use that and then seal the whole thing up. Or what you could do is you could copy out some instructions on how to do it with the type of seed that you're using because there's slightly different instructions depending on the size of the seeds. Um, these ones are just alfalfa sprouts. So for today, I'm just gonna use about a tablespoon's worth. So for um, a smaller jar, you don't wanna use quite as many seeds, but if you know somebody's gonna use it right away or you just don't wanna give them all of the seeds, then you could put two or three teaspoons, upwards of a tablespoon into the jar with the instructions and then use, again, your cheesecloth on top. Um, and actually I'm gonna save that for a second Then use the jar. And that's pretty much it. It's super simple. Uh, the cheesecloth is nice because when you're adding the water to it, then, um, and then rinsing them out afterwards, then it will drain, but it holds those tiny little seeds in. And you can sprout tons of different things, whether it's alfalfa sprouts, um, radish seeds, chickpeas, uh, mung beans, although mung beans get a little bit wonky. They're not so pretty when you do them in a jar. They're not so straight, um, but lots of different things that are options out there. And then once you have this, then you can wrap it. So this one we're gonna do as a slightly different type of wrap. So I've got a different tea towel again here. Um, this one's a little smaller than the one before. And what we're gonna do is just lie your jar down in the tea towel and then wrap it up so that the top ends match, okay? And then we're going to um, kind of pretend that we're wrapping a present. So I'm gonna actually go in from this side and I'm gonna pull this right up to the inside of the jar here, okay? Actually, so you can see it a little bit easier here. So it's gonna make kind of like a triangle. If you've ever done origami, um, then you would fold kind of similar to that. You're gonna have it so it's flat against the side and you're gonna do this on both sides of the jar. Okay, about even. And then we're gonna make a chevron pattern actually on the top. So you're going to take one side, keep that inside edge folded and just fold it over the side so you end up with a line across here. 
Okay, make sure that jar stays tight down at the bottom. And then again, the top one's gonna come across. I'll tuck that back in again. Okay, so again, we've got a little bit of a cross at the bottom. And we do the same thing with the other side. So you're still gonna start the same side as the first one. Oops, I pulled that a little bit too much. And then pull it across. And then same thing here. I'm gonna take this one again and pull it across. And then we're gonna use a little twist at the top just to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna take an elastic again. Again, you could use anything you like to tie the top. It can be a ribbon, it can be twine. Um, I'm just using an elastic because it's what I have and it is easy to make the top, okay? So then you can see we've got a bit of a chevron pattern across the top here and make the top look nice and pretty. And then we're gonna add a couple little things to it. So again, you can add whatever you like. You can add ribbons, you can add greenery. This time I'm actually adding an old set of earrings that I had um, and I haven't worn in probably 10 years. And it seems like the kind of thing that would be really nice to add. So all I'm gonna do is just tuck them into the elastic again on the top, okay? And it just adds a little something. You could also put on a little decoration um, of any type on there. Okay, so just adds a little something there. And then let's actually put another little tiny piece of sage as well. This would actually look really nice with if you had a red tea towel if you were using the sage as well. Just to give it a little extra something to make it look pretty. And then that's just, again, one more way that you can wrap up a jar to make it look nice for gift giving. Another thing you can do if you're giving away a jar, I like this for things that are simple. So this again is just our bread mix. Um, and I've written the instructions on how to use the mix inside on the jar with a wet erase marker, okay? And you want it to be a wet erase marker because the dry erase ones, when you are handling them, they'll just wash right off. But with the wet erase ones, you can wipe them a lot and they do not come off. They have to be used or wiped off with water. So it's really nice because you can draw little decorations if you want to. It gives it just a little something to do. And then it's kind of nice because then when you are done using the mix and you go to wash your jar, you end up with a really clean jar that you could use for whatever you want. You don't have a recipe or just instructions left on that jar when you're done. Okay, and there's, that's really all it is. It's super simple. And it's even nicer if you have really nice handwriting and not the scroll that I put onto this today. And then the last thing, um, just again as another idea is you can find just any jar. So these are actually um, lemon herb salts that I made up just in the oven, okay, with lemon zest and herbs and uh, I actually used some rock salt for this and just ground it up. But uh, we're gonna use a little bit of the beeswax uh, wrapper. So just, all you have to do is just stick it on top. So if you have a jar that you found and you don't have a lid for it, for the example, this one doesn't have a lid, you can simply press the beeswax onto it and it will stay, which is wonderful. And then we can either leave it as is or we can add some extra decorations. So I'm gonna use the twine and I'm gonna then wrap it around the outside top of the jar. So again, just another way that you can add things together. And you can see there's different ways of putting them together, but use what you have at hand. So whether it's fresh herbs um, or dried herbs or anything that you can get outside, then it just gives you another way to make your homemade gifts look a little bit more festive. Wow, that was awesome. Those are such pretty, pretty jars. I loved how you ended up wrapping everything um, in that. Um, so, I just wanted to say, Rebecca, that was awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, and um, if you didn't notice everybody, uh, we did type uh, out the links to all of the recipes um, in the chat box there. And we will be sending an email along with the recipes with a link to this video so you can check it out again, as well as um, some beautiful tags that um, Rebecca made for everybody as a little gift. <laughs> um, and Rebecca, uh, I think we're gonna open the floor to some questions. 
if anybody wants to um, ask. Again, just type your question in or you can put up your hand and we can unmute you. Um, or if you have anything you want to say to Rebecca, please say so in the chat. But Rebecca, I'm just going to pass it over to you. <laughs> No, that's great. Thanks so much for uh, doing this with me today, guys. So if anyone has any questions, then please just type them in chat or uh, like you said, just uh, raise your hand and let us know that you have something you want to ask and I'm happy to answer for you. Deborah says that she can't wait to try drying those orange slices for decorations. Oh yeah, so much fun. Yeah, and you can do lemons as well or limes or grapefruits, like pretty much any of the citrus fruits that you can do. Um, so whatever you tend to normally get for yourself, just buy one extra one, chop it up and put it in the oven and you're good to go. Um, what does that say? You mentioned the flavored salt at the very end. Could you quickly go over that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's sure. Really funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're actually going to be doing that next week as well, I believe. But uh, really what you're doing is you're taking uh, just kosher salt. Um, you can use different kinds of salt. So if you want to use a fancy one, you could, but you're taking your salt and you are um, taking some lemons and you're going to zest lemons right over top of the salt so that all of the oils go into the salt as well. You're going to mix in some herbs. So this one is, I believe it was sage, uh, rosemary and thyme that went into it. Um, just fresh herbs chopped up. You could, I guess, use dry as well, but fresh herbs chopped up and then they are all going to get mixed up together just with your hands. And then you put them in the oven. Um, again for a couple of hours at about 200 just until it's really really dry so you don't want to have any of the moisture from the lemons that's left over in it um, or from the fresh herbs and that's pretty much it um, you can throw it in a food processor or you can mash it up a little bit more um, mortar pestle style whatever kind of works for you and you can use whatever herbs you want but so it's super simple you're you're in essence just dehydrating everything in the oven um, and Deborah says, do you suggest drying the pine cones before using? There are lots in my local park. Uh, yes, especially if um, they're very fresh off the tree and have that little bit of sap still on the ends of them. Um, but you can just leave them out, just leave them in your house, or you can put them over an air vent would work. Uh, or if you had your oven on, you could do that. If you put them in the oven though, they will open up really, really fast, which is, if you want them open, that's a nice thing to do. Um, but if you want them closed, then I would not put them near a heat source. Um, just to let everybody know that's on the call right now, um, next week we also uh, will be running another zero waste series. Um, and this in, in the series, um, it is save, waste less, save more. And it's all about using your um, veggies and fruits that are either going off or are just at the end of their life. Um, in, in different ways and how to preserve them in, in, a, in some sense, right? So we'll be making um, refrigerator pickles, uh, which is a really simple, easy um, recipe for just about any veggies. Um, and Rebecca, what are we gonna be making? What else are we making? Uh, the lemon herb salt. And we're go. gonna do a fruit syrup turned, it's like a two for one, the fruit syrup, and then with the leftover solids, we'll get used to make fruit leather. Um, yeah. And I think maybe, maybe croutons. We'll see how that goes. If we have time, we'll see. That's, we have time, uh, we'll it's, see. it's really exciting. Um, so that uh, sign up is gonna be up and happening, I think, um, tomorrow. So stay tuned if you wanna participate in that one as well. Um, is there anybody else that has any questions before we sign off and say our biggest thanks to Rebecca? <laughs> I know it takes some people a little time to type, but I'm going to say I don't think so. <laughs> so um, I just want to say again, Rebecca, we're so appreciative of you taking the time and showing us all of these creative ways um, and creative recipes, but creative ways to wrap them as well. And, and some sharing some zero waste um, or race free gifts that we can um, share with our friends over the holidays or as um, even hostess gifts, all of these kind of things. And not that we're really going out that much at these days, but they're, they're always good to have in the back of our heads. And yeah, I just, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, I really had fun doing it.
All right, everybody, um, stay tuned for the following workshops and thanks for joining us today and look out for those emails with all of the recipes and the video links and those amazing tags that Rebecca created for us. All right, take care. <laughs>